Department meeting the Land Use Committee, Zoning Bylaw Review Committee, and the Planning Board. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for all nations, for the nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Town of Burlington will be holding the July 15th joint meeting of the Planning Board as a hybrid meeting due to the expiration of the state emergency that was issued due to the COVID-19 virus on March 12th, 2020. Um, please note that the option for a remote participation via WebEx is being provided as a courtesy to the public. This meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Can, can everybody hear me on the WebEx? Yes, we can. Thank you. All yeah. right. So, so those um, seeking to participate remotely, those of you that aren't already, um, can do via Cisco WebEx at townofburlington.webex.com, and the meeting number is one seven three two five three three six six one. The meeting password is sixteen forty five. Um, you can also join by phone at six one seven three one five zero seven zero four. This meeting is being broadcast on the BCAT government channel, which can be found on Comcast channel 99, RCN 15, and Verizon 41. It's also being streamed on Facebook Live and the B via the BCAT Facebook page. The public will be able to make comments during this hearing during the time for public comments. Questions can be asked via WebEx, WebEx chat function, Facebook Live, or by calling the planning office at 781-270-1625. <clears throat> and by sending emails to planning at burlington.org at the meeting. All persons ask a question or make a comment must identify themselves. Uh, after our joint meeting concludes, we'll be immediately begin the regular scheduled planning board meeting for the proponent's benefit who is here, who is here representing the zoning bylaw review committee. Mm. On WebEx, yeah. Wait, but, sorry? Who, 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 is on, who on WebEx is representing the zoning bylaw committee? Uh, Sherry Ellis is here. Betsy, Thank you, Sherry. Betsy Hughes is here. Great. And, uh, and Edward Parsons is here. Great. Thank you. And who is here representing the Land Use Committee? Patricia O'Brien is present. Thank you. Let's begin. Um, if any audience member in the hearing room wishes to speak, please come up to the table uh, and identify yourself or Online. Is there anyone? Does that include remote people? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, there are three meetings going on right now. So I'm here for the planning board one. Can I talk or is that the wrong time? Yeah. If so, sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, Burlington Planning Board, for the opportunity to speak. My name is Stephen Myers. I own 52 Muller Road in Burlington since 2004. The reason for my attendance today is regarding the application for Tesla superchargers that Tesla and the Burlington Simon Mall have put in front of this board. I had an opportunity to read the May 27th Planning Board meeting minutes, and it had this stated in bullet point 2D. It states, four of the 12 stations allow for short-term parking as well. This one new planning board requirement, which was not part of the application, will now require 33% of the spots to be co-utilized for non-charging, meaning anybody can park any type of vehicle there for any reason and utilize the spots while they shop at the mall. Based on my research, which could be incorrect, there are over 5,700 parking spots at the Burlington Mall. My question to you, why do four of these precious EV charging spots have to be made for short-term parking as well? There is a well-known term for this in the EV world, and it is called icing. That is the act of parking in the space intended for electric cars without making use of or having any need for the charger. In other words, a car with an internal combustion engine, known as an ICE vehicle, using a parking space reserved for charging electric cars. I would like you to picture this for a moment, if you would. You are on a long drive back from vacation and your car is low on battery. You have an EV, so a gas station is not an option. You look on your Tesla screen and it says Burlington Mass, four of the 12 stalls are open. 
So you pull into the Tesla supercharger at the Burlington Mall, thinking four spots are open because the Tesla app and the screen say they were open. You arrive and find zero spots open because all of these stalls were taken by gasoline cars that park there because the sign says, quote, short-term parking allowed. You now have to sit there for an hour waiting to charge, waiting to charge to start to charge. For the board members that own gasoline cars, how mad would you be if you pulled into the Shell station and there were four cars blocking the gas pumps because their owners are eating lunch at the restaurant next door? You may not know, but Tesla does everything possible to encourage people not to park at superchargers if they are not charging. How? Once the car's battery is full, if one continues to leave one's car plugged in, you will be charged an idle fee of $1 per minute. Believe me, it's a huge incentive to move the vehicle so others can charge their Teslas. What the planning board is doing is the opposite of this, encouraging people to park without charging. It is true, Tesla will not police the spots. And I understand that this point was discussed at the previous meeting. But if the spots are labeled for EV active charging only, people with gas cards will generally not park there. Yes, you get some people that want to be jerks and park there anyways, but that is fundamentally different than having Burlington's planning board request that 33% of the spots be utilized by gas cars and then putting up signs stating anybody can park there. You may or may not know, but another mall in town, the Burlington Crosswood Crossroads Mall, had the same problem with their two EV chargers. The signage said, short-term parking allowed, and it created a mess and caused all sorts of ill will and problems between gas and EV vehicles. Once the mall changed their sign to EV charging only, the problem went away. I would also be remiss if I didn't point out that on the state level, the Massachusetts State Legislature has passed a law, Chapter 448 of the Acts of 2016, allowing local towns to enact fines of up to $50 for parking in EV spots. My question to you, why would the Burlington Planning Board do the exact opposite and encourage short-term parking here? Summary, if the Burlington Board plans making short-term parking a requirement of the permit for the Burlington Mall, that would be a disaster. With thousands of parking spots at the mall, I really do not think that these additional four spots will make a difference to the general population shopping there, where it will make a huge difference to cars trying to refuel their vehicles. I highly suggest that you revisit this and change it to, quote, only EVs that are actively charging are allowed to utilize these spots. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Um, you know, I, I appreciate uh, your comments. I think if, if we do um, experience an issue, you know, we can go back and revisit, um, you know, our, our decision at that point in time. But um, it's my understanding we're not even built there yet. So, um, you know, we're kind of proactively trying to curb a situation that doesn't exist. It, but this, this is a problem, if I may, across hundreds of Tesla chargers all over the country. And this board is doing the exact opposite. There are Tesla superchargers going in in Woburn at the uh, target there that are gonna go live in the next couple of weeks. I assume these Burlington ones are gonna go live in the next three to six months, however fast they get them up. And you are mandating that Tesla in the mall cause a problem here. And this is the board causing this problem. And it's against everything that's going on around the country with the state of Massachusetts and every other town. I, you're making a huge mistake. And this is at, at the request of this board. Simon Mall didn't want this, nor did Tesla. It's this board that is making this, what I call a ridiculous request. Kristen, um, the other charging stations that are at the Burlington Mall, do they have the same requirement short term? Do we know? They do not. And I've utilized them and they're extremely slow. You have to, those charge at about four to 10 miles an hour. These Tesla charges, charges five to 600 miles per hour. And if you own a Tesla, and, and I, I think I think the part of the problem here is that none of the board members here own an electric vehicle. Otherwise you would, re this would completely well, sure. resonate. Uh, member LaRue does actually. It's not a Tesla. 
uh, again, you know, uh, in, until I see a, a situation at hand, um, I, I don't know that we're really prepared to reverse our decision at this point in time. That's not to say that we wouldn't, um, you know, if there is, you know, if a situation arises, but um, I, I'm not quite sure that there's anything that we're going to do at this point in time. I, I appreciate your comments. I'm glad you you, know, you, you came to uh, the meeting today. Is anyone on the board? Does anyone else have any? I'll, make a, I'll make a comment. Yeah. I, so I, th I think um, uh, what we did was we, we looked at where Tesla wanted to put those spots, right? Mm -hmm. They they want to put them in a in a in a very prime location. So I think if if they didn't desire that prime location and there were alternate suggested that weren't in prime locations, I think we'd probably have different uh, conditions put on that. So. So there were, if you you were at that meeting, there were a lot of discussions around that, and um, it was Tesla's choice to 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 go to that particular spot. Where if they'd gone to other ones that were recommended, that probably wouldn't be the case of of putting that uh, the short term parking there. Was was that? Uh, yeah, that's that, that, that sounds accurate. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of discussion on that. Yeah. Thank you. So um, again, you know, should we decide or should we see that there is a you know a, a a negative impact due to our decision, we can come back and, and review the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else that'd like to speak? Okay, we'll move on to matter uh, matters of appointment. Uh, this is a public hearing petition to rezone property to the high rise industrial IH district one rounder way submitted by David Reinfeld and Lou Freight. Is uh, who's here for the applicant? Yeah. Hey, folks, here. can you hear me? Oh. There you go. Uh, I'm here. Um, I just I can't seem to unmute unmute my. Um... We right. can hear you. Good. We can hear you. Be good. Hold on one second. Would you please identify yourself? Can you hear? Oh, you can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. This is David Reinfeld. Um, I'm one of the owners of uh, three of uh, one rounder way. And can you can everyone hear me? Because it says I'm muted on my screen. We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. We can all hear you. Um. Okay. Great. So uh, my my partner Lou Freight may be on the phone as uh, on the phone as well. Uh, sorry for the uh, um, uh, connection; it doesn't seem to be uh, working as well on my end. Um, I am I am um, following up a letter that we had sent on June twenty third to um, the Board of Selectmen, requesting a change in our our zoning to um, from IG to IH. And, um, and I want to first thank uh, Elizabeth um, von Venter and Brady Caldwell for sort of guiding us and directing us through um, presenting to this to this uh, uh, board or this here. You are now muted. <laughs> thank you, Josh. Uh -huh. Let's give him a minute or two to see if he can get back online. While he's waiting, you locate Randall Road Design. I'm bringing it up. I'm right back. I'm bringing it up right now. Thank you. It's the property next to the Hilton Garden on uh, Wheeler Blanchard Road as you go from Middlesex Turnpike down to um, South Bedford Street. So what's the, what's the business that's there right now? You know? There is a building that was built, I believe, in 1960. Um, it's the building that's way back in the highway, um, way back toward the highway. 
Um, it was changed to rounder records, rounder way when rounder records came in um, to occupy the space. We've approved a couple different um, uses so far, like CrossFit and other kind of, you know, athletic sports kind of warehouse type <laughs> um, kind of uses. Uh, it's a very old building. The site is also in not fantastic shape. So um, as Liz is bringing it up, it's right against the highway. Um, surround, there's a driveway in surrounded by wetlands on kind of both sides has this, this triangle shape um, to it. The, uh, the property to the right of the screen is what is now under construction as the jumbo self storage building. Um, and if you actually drive in the parking lot of round the one rounder way, it's like, whoa, it's like right there at the, the self storage. So it's the property lines are very close. Um, but I don't know exactly how many square feet the building is, um, but it's, it's an here. older building, older site. So welcome back. We're back. Yeah, sorry. Trying to fill <laughs> the air a little while you're, while you're gone. Right. Yeah, sorry. This is David Reinfeld again. Sorry about that. Um, I'm I'm joining, I guess, uh, without the without video, and that seems to work better. But um, I see our building. Um, so that's a forty thousand square foot building. It's a twenty thousand square uh, foot footprint, and it's two stories. Um, my partner uh, and I have owned the building. I think since two thousand eight or two thousand nine. Uh, we we bought the building from Ronda Records. Um, we ran our our businesses in this building. Uh, which we've since sold, but we have um, a single tenant and we are working towards um, repositioning this building and the entire site um, really to uh, uh, market to uh, life sciences and lab um, type of customers and, and tenants. Um, so this is, this is something that we've, we're, we're motivated and we're pushing and directing and uh, I believe that in May uh, earlier, there was a, uh, a similar presentation to the board for um, rezoning of um, certain clusters that were fairly close to our building on, um, it was like eight, a 76 Blanchard and um, 80 Blanchard. And if you are able to sort of zoom out from this um, bird's eye view, uh, the, as, aside from the construction project, just to the to the um, east of us, if you continue further, that's where this cl B cluster is, um, which I I understand, um, you know, is, is, was looking for the same treatment that we are um, for uh, repositioning to the IH zoning. Um, our you know our motivation is to. Uh, really to, to gain a tenant that um, is a, a higher credit worthy tenant um, that would make the building more valuable um, and in turn I, I feel would generate more um, taxable revenue for um, this property and also uh, you know just in terms of the the life science and biotech industry um, we, we are seeing a lot of activity and interest, um, not just in Burlington and Cambridge, but even outside of, of Cambridge in, in the um, 95 corridor. Um, we're working with um, a, a Mar Marcy um, Alvarado from Parsons, and uh, she's helping us um, guide us through uh, marketing the, the, the building. And that's just something that we've seen um, really start to um, gain momentum over the past couple of years. Um, so with with the um, May meeting and with uh, looking at the presentation, um, we wanted to um, sort of work towards uh, and, and use some of that momentum and that focus uh, from the planning board's um, standpoint to put forward our recommendation, our request to, to consider um, you know, re reclassifying or rezoning um, our building. Um, I, you know, I could sort of reiterate what was on that uh, May uh, document that was presented to, to this committee, but I, I'm, I'm sure you probably have seen that. Um, and so I guess, you know, in, in, in summary or in conclusion, I, uh, 
I would like to to um, ask for a yes vote to grant um, our our um, building and the owners um, this uh, IH designation. I understand that there's a, a couple steps still to come, um, but um, this is sort of one of the first steps that we as property owners uh, wanted to take at this at this time. Great. Thank you, Mr. Reinfeld. Uh, does staff have any additional comments that they'd like to make at this time? We don't have comments at this time. We'd just like to listen to these opening presentations and we'll certainly comment as we move along. Great. Uh, does any member of the planning board have any comments or that they'd like to make at this time? Is the land use, uh, any comments from land use? Any comments from zoning bylaw review committee? None from Sherry. Great. Uh, this is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public have any, have any comments on this item? May have a motion. We motion to continue this matter to the planning board meeting of August 19th, 2021. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you so much. We'll see you in August. Thank you. We'll see you in Madam, August, August 19th. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to take items 1B through 1E together for discussion purposes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item B is a public hearing petition to rezone property to the high rise industrial IH district 1 wall street submitted by the, by the Gutierrez company. Item C is a public hearing petition to rezone property to the high rise industrial IH district 2 wall street submitted by the Gutierrez company. Item D is a public hearing petition to rezone property to the high rise industrial IH district 10 wall street submitted by the Gutierrez company. Item E is a public hearing petition to rezone property to the high rise industrial IH district 20 wall street submitted by the Gutierrez company. Hi, good evening. Nice to see you in person. <laughs> Exciting. I'm not sure I, I, it's, it's, it's unusual at this point. I'm not sure uh, everyone's comfortable. It's great to see everybody uh, um, well and present. Um, very exciting. I am Scott Weiss from the Gutierrez company. Um, Thank you for uh, uh, your time and attention this evening. Do you have a uh, couple of slides that we we put together? Um, as many of you uh, may know, uh, the um, trying to orient and see how how that looks from here. Um, as many of you uh, know, the Guterres Company uh, built uh, several areas around the corner of Cambridge Street, Wall, and Wayside. Um, the sort of north side is Burlington Office Park 1, uh, Wall Street. Um, and there are several properties, including 1 Wall, 2 Wall, 10 Wall, and 20 Wall, which, as you read through, are, are part of this uh, request to, to um, uh, change the zoning to what I guess will soon be formally known as the IH district, perhaps. Um, depending on how that goes, but uh, for, for now, uh, talking about uh, changing to the IH district. Um, so the, these uh, four, four properties and uh, four buildings are shown here. Uh, one Wall Street, it's hard to see, uh, uh, is on the left side of the screen. Um, and then going from top, uh, from bottom to top, on the right side is two wall, uh, 10 wall, and 20 wall. Um, and if we flip to the next slide, and I'll keep this very brief, um, the next slide just shows you the um, the current zoning, which uh, in the bluish purple, trying to match the uh, the colors in the online zoning map, uh, is the currently general industrial, the IG zone, and the red is the general business or uh, BG zone today. And then just uh, for point of reference, we'll flip to the next one. Um, uh, I'm going to, I can't see that from here and <laughs> guessing you guys may not either. Uh, um, I got to get to my cheat sheet. One Wall Street is the existing office building is 192,000 square feet uh, today on uh, 6.78 acres with a current FAR of 0 0.65. Um, so 
fairly dense by town current town standards built a long time ago in the in the 80s um, and and spans across the um, general industrial and general business zone. Uh, to Wall Street is the former paparazzi, which is now the Tez McCall, uh Jack's coal fired pizza um, location. Uh, and that is one and a half acres, currently at a 0.18 FAR, um, uh, about a 12,000 square foot building uh, there. 10 Wall Street, which is a retail plaza, um, 22,000 square feet on three acres, 0.17 FAR. Um, and um, 20 Wall Street, which is a medical office building, uh, is is 2.9 acres, 0.41 FAR today. Um, so as, as people have talked, as you guys well know, um, the town has made tremendous strides in becoming a much more welcoming life science industry community, um, or more welcoming to the life science industry uh, in the community. And, and it's been slow, it's been delayed by a pandemic shutdown, um, but uh, the efforts are taking, taking hold. Um, we, as many of you know, prior to, um, prior to uh, the pandemic shutdown, I think it was actually 2018, 2019, excuse me, um, had modified our permits for an existing office building at 4 Burlington Woods. Um, and uh, since that time, uh, things did obviously get very quiet. And then everybody knows the life science industry has exploded during the pandemic in certain areas, in certain markets, very COVID related, very vaccine related. Um, the rest of the industry has been churning and growing and there's been investment. And a lot of the hard work of this community is starting to um, come to fruition. I think in the last month alone, we had more tours at four Burlington Woods for, for potential tenants than we have had uh, probably over the prior 18 months uh, during the pandemic. We do have, I can't say it yet, but there are there's a group that will hopefully be applying for a building permit to build out space in the building in very short order. Uh, they actually uh, were moving forward. They actually went through an, an acquisition and will be growing their space in the building before they've even come forward to Take space in the building. One of the um, one of the the keys to the industry is it is a very fast moving industry, and that's what we've talked about. You need to have things in place. You need to be ready to go um, to be responsive. And the the companies in this in these industries that are researching and developing and and then going to market and doing trials and 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 uh, investigating these and developing these these medicines. Uh, are constantly finding new technologies, new information, and merging and buying and modifying the, the groups uh, uh, along the way. So there's a lot of activity and change. Uh, so one of the things that for Burlington Woods we're also looking to do is build a, a spec suite, if you will, um, which I'm sure you, you've talked about with some of the other users in town, which also helps bring some potential new companies to town and, and allows it to happen quickly. So those things are happening. There's some great things that are happening at Fort Burlington Woods. And as we look at what's happening at Wall Street and how does that relate and how does our experience elsewhere relate, there are a number of properties here that allows us to start thinking about what this future will be uh, for Wall Street. We recognize that there's, there's uncertainty around the office market, to say the least. And as we look at the um, one Wall Street building, the largest building that's here, that we're not looking to expand, there is a section of it that was built on the BG side that is two stories. And there's a section that's uh, the six story tall building in the um, general uh, or IG district. The two story section has good floor to floor heights. It, has, it, it seems ready to accept lab space. And we want to be in a position that we can be more receptive and market this building as current leases come to an end over the next six months, year, two, two to three years. And we know and we get the feeling and get the intimation that companies may be leaving and downsizing and, and consolidating space. We want to be receptive and have this building be ready and positioned for life science lab type users to come in. 
So as we started thinking about that, we started thinking about Wall Street and Burlington Office Park One more holistically to think about how it could be integrated and become another cluster point within, within the town and how this comes together. Um, and that's good, I'm glad you zoomed in um, on that. Uh, so we started looking at the other side of the street. Obviously, the amenities are there with the restaurant and some retail, but those are also becoming somewhat old and outdated. Um, the, the viability, that, that retail plaza at 10 Wall Street existed prior, not prior to, uh, but during a very older generation of uh, Burlington Crossroads Plaza and prior to Wayside Commons. Um, so the viability of retail in this particular location is somewhat limited. We know that, that the board's granted some permits recently for uh, users to come in and occupy some of the vacant space there. And we, we hope that that um, will continue, but some of the other vacant space actually becomes some very small, kind of a different type of opportunity for, I, I, the startup is not the right word, but that's the word that people think of, new companies, new co's, um, in terms of young companies that are just now coming out of research and maybe publicly funded or university funded research and now starting to market and develop and wanting to commercialize their product. And so this gives them that kind of opportunity in perhaps 10 wall. Um, the existing leases in the building for, for um, 10 wall, as well as the restaurant uh, parcel extend for quite some time. So is there an opportunity in the future 10 years kind of Time frame to think about redevelopment on those parcels? Yes, but in the meantime, they'll continue, those uses will continue to serve as amenity space for the, for the facilities that, that are there. And then the last piece, obviously, 20 Wall Street is an existing medical office building, which sort of can help anchor a life science type of park where perhaps you have medical office, you have places that as offices and, and medical offices kind of transition into the future and provide opportunities to interact um, with the R&D lab environment a little bit more closely. It gives us the opportunity to have a more medical R&D lab type park, if you will, in this location. So that's the vision, if you will, for why we want to come here and uh, um, change the, the um, the uh, uh, zoning to allow for this future vision, if you will, for the, for the park. And the most immediate is certainly the benefits to turnover of tenancy at one Wall Street, but then thinking holistically about the future of, of the park in general. Um, and I know because one of the things that we've heard and I know is part of the concern is there are some properties that today have lower FARs because they are retail or restaurant type based uses. So if you were to, and this would be the last slide, uh, look at what the expansion potential is somewhere down the road, if everything got rebuilt and redeveloped, we could add a total of about 75, 76,000 square feet of space. In Burlington terms, it's not really a huge amount of space. And it would be taking what is primarily retail restaurant space, high traffic volume, high turnover, uh, lots of cars, lots of parking, and lowering the, increasing the square footage, but lowering the density and intensity of use by comparison. Um, so just to give you that that sort of um, comparison as we go forward. So that that's why we're here. Um, we look for your support and uh, hope that this will help continue the uh, the growth and and um, evolution of the Burlington office and R&D market into an office lab and R&D market. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, does plan staff have any, have any initial comments on this item? Um, not yet, I want to reserve a little bit, but I, I will say that the exercise of going through um, kind of development potential, I know um, a member, um, member in Pemba who was actually absent tonight um, was I would be appreciative of that effort um, and had asked that um, applicants kind of look at that, and I think I, had I remembered, would have said to the one rounder wayside that to do that kind of 
um, exercise I think would be helpful before the next meeting as well. But at this point, um, I'm just kind of just as you guys sitting back and listening. Okay. Uh, does any any member of the planning board have any questions? Um, first question for staff. Um, I know there's quite a bit of residential property behind this. Um, I don't know if they're condos or apartments or a mixture of those. Have those people been notified? So, uh, well, I'll let you guys answer. Uh, it, it, just to comment, there is a buffer. There's another property between us and the residential area off. Where? I just have to yeah. know if, I, because I think this will impact them. It would, it might, it's not necessarily a negative impact, but it's an impact. And I think they'd want to know. Yeah. Um, like to make sure. So that the multifamily project, um, I, I don't know, has not been, as, as you guys know, notification is or locally required to town meeting um, and then obviously advertisement, but um, uh, butters for um, rezoning a lot. A lot of times you ask like you are now. Yes, um, so I'm asked advertise <laughs> um, to a butters for rezoning. So you can certainly um, you know, advise the applicant and give them the information to do that. Um, so there's that and then behind there's the Gillis property um, kind of at the end of the road where um, next the and that the, the um, my son calls it the mega, your friend with the mega tow trucks um, <laughs> down at the end. Wind Street Towing. Wind Street Towing um, at the end. And then you get the residential neighborhood behind. Yeah. Um, so there is actually, I, I when thinking about it, I thought it was a little closer than and it was. But, but anyway, we'll take a look at what those residents Because that's the way these people are. enter their home. That's yes. how they get into their neighborhood. So I think they would want to know what's going on and be informed. So yep. I would appreciate that. Um, only other question was when you come forward, because I know this is just preliminary. When you come back, you had said that you have a bigger vision for this whole big area, the, all the lots together. Will you be able to share with us in more that vision is when you come or is it still very amorphous? So in, in terms of the vision, the idea is to make this more of a life science medical park. And so longer term, we, we, we think about the viability of the retail there. Um, so would that be an option to reuse that building in, as I mentioned, in more of a new co, new company kind of um, setup? That's, that's the thought. So the visioning is really about the retenancy and reuse of the space. Could there be redevelopment in terms of knocking a building down and, and, and we haven't thought about that. Um, and then one other thing that I'd want us to maybe address when you come back before us is um, if you envision a change to the medical office building or a departure of that medical office building, I do think that it's utilized heavily by Burlington residents and would probably be missed if that changed. So I'm curious to know what your plan is for that specific parcel. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to piggyback on, on that, you know, when we're talking about that vision, um, you know, as you stated, as we know, we have approved uh, some permits for, for tenants in that area. I'd be interested in seeing kind of um, what those leases look like. You know, if we're rezoning, what does that do to you, those tenants um, and, and kind of where that stands? So that would be of interest to me. Um, Mayor Spano. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just quick question out of curiosity. I know we just approved X call, but 10 wall. Um, this, what are the uh, the occupancy rates over there at 10 wall uh, specifically? I know that they can coexist because the first time I ever heard of Azure before they moved to Burlington, they were in the, the, the complex of the Mighty Squirrel Brewery. And that's my first. So I know that they can coexist like X call could coexist with. I'm just wondering, are they sitting vacant over there or are they, how, how are you doing over there? Um. Off the top of my head, um, I don't have the exact percentage. I think we have about six or seven thousand square feet vacant currently. Um, and uh, as you said, you know, the idea would there these uses can coexist. Um, it's a it's a little bit different type of an opportunity for a for a lab user for a biotech company. So it might appeal to a different group, and we're trying to capture a very broad market. Yeah, maybe that data next time around would yep. help. Just die curse. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. uh, a question for Scott. Uh, 
five Wall Street is uh, no longer your property. Is that correct, Scott? That is correct. I don't think that's you... correct. And and the five Wall Street property also, by the way, was part of a planned development district. So it was a separate, um, oh, right, right, separate zoning already. Okay. Thank you. Um, do any members of the land use committee have any questions or comments? Not at this time. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, zoning by law review committee. Do you have a Sherry, I, This is Sherry. I would like to second Barbara's um, request that the residents up there at Heritage at Stone Ridge be notified of this because I think, as Barbara said, this is their only way in. So I think um, it's of importance that they should know that, you know, something is maybe changing. So thank you. Thank you, Sherry. I have one. Sure. Just one more question to staff. Uh, so if this gets rezoned, uh, say at September town meeting as a uh, IH or whatever it's known at, as at the time, then that makes some of the uh, restaurant retail uses non-conforming, correct? It does, yes. Okay. How can you extrapolate on that? How does that does that mess anything up? Does that make it make it easier for them to do something we'd rather not see them do, or what? Well, since you buttoned up uh, Section Six back in what 2012, well, five members. Uh, right. Yeah, so uh, it's pretty clear what you can and can't do in terms of nonconforming use. Uh, so the restaurants are all by special permit. Um, in there, so new restaurants, as you guys all know, need new special permits. So, um, if these restaurant these restaurants themselves would be grandfathered in, um, you know, entirely new restaurants, I think would have trouble coming in um, to these locations. Um, but I, I mean, a direction that independently, completely outside of this, that Melissa Tsimpaklos and I, the economic development director, is also trying to figure out if there's a way to. Um, add amenities to some of these industrial districts as we've done in a lot of other places and PDs. Um, no, that's not on the table for discussion yeah. right now, but just in general, if, if we're looking at how we're looking at new, more newer zoning districts and this being one that we've um, been using a little bit more and how to do, what do we really want it to be um, holistically? Um, we've been lucky enough to have these types of uses next to each other um, with other zoning. so. But um, but anyway, yes, it would make current uses non-conforming. Um, the uses themselves now would be allowed to stay, right. but new uses coming in would have a tricky time getting in under a zoning district that they were not permitted. Yes, thank you. Yes, I want to thank you, Scott, for that presentation. Uh, it's interesting in Burlington and everywhere else how rapidly things can change and how you want to keep yourself at the forefront and available for whatever response to make. And it happens to be medical research right now. But when I think that I spent a lot of time down there one time, was that where the Chuck E. Cheese was? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I did, too. I got a lot of did you? <laughs> down there all the time. Yeah. Uh, and it cost him time. No, it's <laughs> evil fan. Oh no, it's black and white. I didn't get the kids come. <laughs> they slowed me down. Uh, no, but uh, uh, I'm sure the, the board's going to be willing to work with you on this because it's in our interest as a town to mm -hmm. keep a taxable base that responds to whatever the the, the real estate needs are. So uh, if this rezoning is going to make us more attractive to uh, these research uses then, you know, I'm all for it. And, um, I, I appreciate that, that comment. And I, I will echo the, the town, you know, over the last several years has been really, really um, on the right page of uh, trying to work together to keep our buildings uh, full and uh, and it it's it's collectively beneficial for the town taxes for us for for our operations obviously and the idea of keep investing and keep moving forward and rethinking how you're using space is is an important piece so so I appreciate the uh, the you know the foresight that that the board shares. 
Anyone else have any questions or comments? Uh, this is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public have any comments on this item? I have a motion, please. Madam Chair, continue this matter to the planning board meeting of August 19th, 2021. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. We'll see you back in August. Thank you all. Uh, our last item as part of the joint meeting uh, is a public hearing to approve zoning bylaw by renaming the high rise industrial IH district. Sent by the planning board. Uh, Kristen, do you have any comments on this item? Sure. Uh, this item was brought up by member Cavino a couple of meetings ago to look at um, putting it on the um, for the September town meeting. Um, it the to rename the high rise industrial as you guys all know in rewriting a lot of the um, IH district. The IH district is actually ten feet higher than the IG district, so. Where it had originally been 155 feet, it's down to 90. Uh, IG is 80. Um, all of that height is controlled by um, distance from residential, as um, it always has been, actually. Um, but anyway, the um, so we're looking to just rename the district to something that might be a little bit more descriptive of what the district kind of is becoming. Uh, some of the ideas that have come up have been IG2 district. Um, an innovate, which I would be IG2, Innovation Science District would be an IS district, um, Business Life Science, which probably would be BSLS district, Commercial Industrial, which got a kind of, I think moving away from kind of more the yeah, industrial word mm -hmm. is something that at least we would look at. We've um, looked at uh, different cities and towns and try to figure out, is there any magic to this renaming? I've also, just, um, and I'll let Liz talk about kind of the things that the kind of unexciting things that she's actually found. Um, but also talking with Melissa Santopoulos in terms of, you know, this whole thing, as Scott has mentioned, we're really trying to reposition, get attention and making sure that we can diversify our traditional office and create new type lab spaces in Burlington to especially after COVID where everyone's working at home in traditional office. So making sure that, you know, people are here, they're utilizing our buildings and they're paying rent in Burlington. So um, anyway, so we've taken a lot of steps since 2018 um, in actually making it work for these new types of uses, as well as attract and provide appropriate language um, to fit the fit different uses. Um, and can it market Burlington that we're open and we're ready for life science and more, you know, innovative uses. And we have a lot of um, 3D metal printing and other type uses that are not at all life science, but, you know, new and cool and coming out of MIT labs. So um, anyway, as I was talking to Melissa Tintakula, she was saying, like, have we thought about as people search Burlington, are there any kind of just buzzwords that not, you know, kind of you know, cliche buzzwords, but things that we want to be thinking about as people are thinking you know, Burlington and matching those. So this is not a, you know, these four options are the option. They, you know, if you guys have different things, I'm still working with Melissa, um, if she has some thoughts about it too. Um, but overall, it does nothing to change anything about the district other than rename it. We have advertised these other rezonings to make sure that it's the IH district or subsequent name that we choose. So um, we'll figure all that out. So. Um, I don't have a flashy presentation. <laughs> oh, and Liz will talk about what she she and Brady found about not super exciting names and other. So, <laughs> other at their life science clusters in the area, you know, Cambridge. There, I would assume that they would have a special learning district. No, it would kind of be an IG two, IG three. Very boring. Um, same as you know, I, I looked in Lexington, Belrica, surrounding towns that I know have labs, Waltham. They 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 kind of stick to um, a very you know a standardized naming system for their um, for their zoning districts. Um, you know if that's if that's the way we want to go, or if we kind of want to use it towards making you know attracting businesses that we want. Um, that's kind of yeah. But I mean, it was like as excited. It was like office lab. District. Yeah, you it's, know, it's not. Um, so I mean, we're, we'll still look if you guys have some if you guys have suggestions or. 
are reading zoning bylaws of other towns in your free time, uh, <laughs> find some interesting naming conventions. We're, we're open to it. We do need to decide, you know, before we go to print, but it's an open, open dialogue for all of you, all of land use bylaw review. It would be good to probably be have a, something solid by our next meeting yep. um, because town meeting is coming up and we want to make sure everything is kind of solid. Well, I'm sure it will be hotly debated at town I know. meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, you know, um, so. So I don't know if, uh, Member Camino, you had any thoughts? Uh, of course. I, I, uh, one of my suggestions was IG2 because it relates to the IG. It's only it's the IG district, but a little bit different. And Kristen had run, uh, I think when I was in the talking to her at one time, had run something like the uh, innovation dis um, innovation science innovation is getting the science most traction. District. But the word innovation is getting right. the most traction. I now, mean, it, science is yeah. what what had what had bothered me a little bit about that is if those the high industrial high rise gets renamed to innovation science district then the 3d printing company is they're going to say hey what am i you know uh top litter <laughs> type thing but but i just realized as as Kristen was talking that a lot of those are in pd develop planned district development so they wouldn't get their just their zoning district would not get renamed anyway so Maybe there is, uh, I, mean, I mean, I haven't really thought about it, but personally, maybe there is some merit in doing something like that. Uh, I just, I was just concerned about not the, necessarily the competition, but the guys who, who have been here for a long time, feel like they get left behind, you know, da, da, da. You know, we're not, we're not as great as the other guy, you know, that kind. I just didn't want that appearance to happen. And, I don't know. Deserve some more thought by all of us, I'm sure. Absolutely. Uh, I think we have to be careful to, to be too specific because we have some really innovative, bizarre to me. <laughs> no, really. I mean, yeah. that was my business working with these people. But some of the things they're doing now with they're going to be taking sawdust and printing things, yeah. you know, out of wood sure. with that. And so, so that's a whole different business, but I mean, they're as far out front as you can get. Uh, and, and there are other innovative businesses that, in, that we hear about. And when you hear a gentleman sell his business in Boston for like $2 billion, and they say, well, where are you going now? He says, I'm going to Burlington. So uh, I, I think we have to be inclusive. It's good. Let the high-rise people, I mean, the, the uh, medical people Life go. That, that you know we're welcoming them, but they're just going to fit in with you know uh, the other things that we do. So uh, I'd like oops, I I agree with what both Ernie and Paul said. I think we do need to keep it general enough that we we don't know what the innovation of the future is going to be. It might not be science. It might be something else. I think innovation district is broad enough and attractive. To, to the people that we're trying to attract. And I think I'd, I'd like to suggest that. I'm, I'm open to other suggestions as well. But I do think we have to be careful not to get too specific because we don't know what the next innovation will be. I agree. Thank you. Does anyone else on the board have any comments or questions? Great. Uh, does anyone from the land use committee have any comments or questions? at this time thank you okay anyone from zoning bylaw review committee have any questions or comments this is betsy hughes i i have one comment i just want to reinforce the fact that this is a great idea to rename it every time we uh talk about ih in terms of um at least the people in my precinct uh mm -hmm. people don't understand and they see think high rise really high rise buildings and it's very misleading um, and so I think to rename it would be a good thing to help really um, clarify for people what this, these districts are going to be all about. So I like the effort. Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public have any comments on this item? This is this is Sherry. I have a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Sherry. I have a comment or just a thought. 
Sure. Um, um, I also agree that changing the name is good. I would like to suggest thinking about when companies are Googling or searching for life sciences and they know that, you know, Cambridge is a hot spot, um, they're going to look for the same kind of zone. So if you go with a different name that isn't really related to others, I know it's boring, but, um, you know, they're going to find the similar zones in different towns. And, and just like we wanted to be, you know, um, when they were doing the, whatever it is, the gold standard for life sciences, you know, it's that similar term. So maybe having a similar term, even though they're boring, may be worthy of discussion so that you are on that Google search or whatever they do. That's my only comment. I'm not sold on anything. So thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to make a comment? Great. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I make a motion to continue this matter to the planning board meeting of August 19, 2021. All those in favor? Second. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Aye. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Madam Chair, I make a motion to take items 8J out of order for discussion purposes. Before you do that, do you want to just thank the group yes. and thank you everyone for attending. Uh, I look forward to continuing to work with you in the future. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank Good night. Thank you. You can stay, Sally. Of course, yeah. you can stay. You know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Um, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the planning board. We have. Um, one item being continued off this week's agenda. May I have a motion, please? You have a motion. Okay, a second. second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, item J is a continued public hearing application for approval of an amendment to a definitive subdivision plan for, Red, for Redmond Street. Murray Hills Incorporated, the applicant. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a. Oh, you need a. No, no, you're good. Anyone? Make a motion to continue this matter to the planning board meeting of August 19, 2021, and further the planning board agrees to mutually extend the statutory deadline to file the decision subdivision form S, September 9, 2021, endorsed by the applicant on July 15, 2021. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, next up is citizens time. If any audience member in the hearing room wishes to speak, please come up to the table and identify yourself. For those participating remotely, please raise your hand and speak and identify yourself. Is there anyone on WebEx that you say? I believe so. I think we can. I am seeing nobody. Great. Thank you. Oh, All right. Can we go on to announcements? Please do. Sure. Um, so, um, the Board of Appeals will have their next meeting on July 20th. Their location is to be determined. I'm not sure if they're doing it fully remote or in this room. Um, please check the town calendar 48 hours before the meeting uh, to find out what that um, location will be. Um, Citizens Planner Training Collaborative is hosting a um, <coughs> workshop on drafting zoning amendments on July 21st at 6 o'clock via Zoom. If anybody, town official, um, Know, members of zoning by our view land use wants to um, come let us know and we'll, we'll we'll see if we'll get you registered um so actually um you can register yourself we just offered for zoning by our review or land use or board of appeals or if they're interested we can cover the cost of registration and it just says when you register uh send check just let us know so we know how many to add. Oh, so you want us to register? Yeah, yeah, you register and just don't pay. Just write send check and let us know so we add you on the check. We're also trying to figure out, I think Amy Warfield also wanted to um, to register, and I wanted to work with her to see if she might want to host a couple people in the same room to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I need to watch. I, I won't be able to be sitting here to do it, but if some if, if somebody can, we can have a a group watch of drafting zoning amendments. <laughs> so, um, um, so next up um, is the Burlington Housing Partnership Committee. It's uh, meeting on July 22nd at six o'clock via WebEx. Um, the ZBRC Sign Subcommittee is meeting on July 26th at 5:30 via Zoom. Um, the Sculpture Park Committee um, will meet next um, August 3rd at 10 o'clock at the Sculpture Park, which is between uh, the police station and Grandview Farm. Um, and Celebrate Burlington Day is actually happening, which is very exciting. It's happening on August 7th from 11 to 7, and it's going to be at the town common. So, 
Thank you. Adam Chair. Of course, Thanks. Um, I actually wanted to say something in regards to the, the last two items. Um, first of all, to let everyone know that the Sculpture Park um, Stone Bench Project is being completed tonight. I think he's still there, <laughs> probably working until it gets dark, but it probably will be finished tonight. I think they look great and I would encourage everyone to go out there, take a look and bring a drink and sit down and enjoy. It's really beautiful. And um, also at Celebrate Burlington Day, the Sculpture Park will be having events there. Um, we have some great events planned for children, so bring your kids. There's gonna be lots of fun, exciting things for them to do. And um, also at least two, possibly three of the artists are going to be on site, mm. talking to the public, explaining their work, and their process. So I think it'll be a wonderful event for everyone and I hope lots of people come. They'll be in, in the sculpture park or on the common? They'll be in the sculpture park. We don't really have enough um, committee members to man two spots. Sure. So <laughs> we're gonna stay in the park. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any additional announcements? Uh, we don't have any legal notices nor any non-approvals. Uh, let's move on to matter, administrative matters or none. Uh, matters of appointment. Um, item A is a public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to 4.2.6.9 fast order food establishments of the zoning bylaw provisions 68-110 Burlington Mall Road, Gloss 7 Inc. doing business as Teriyaki Madness is applicant. Welcome. Thank Good you. evening, Madam Chair and members of the board. For the record, Christine Hung of Reamer and Bronstein, attorney for the applicant. Seven Laws LLC doing business as Teriyaki Madness. Um, with me tonight, I have um, Tony Nazer, who is a ma managing partner, and Langdon Laws, a um, the president of the applicant. Um, we're here before you tonight on a special permit for a fast order food establishment. Um, Teriyaki Madness is a fast casual restaurant with locations all over the country. They are excited to be opening up its very first location here in, here in Burlington as its first New England location. And they are taking over the space that was vacated by Upper Crust Pizza at um, on Burlington Mall Road using the same space as the Upper Crust, which is approximately 1,500 square feet. Um, same number of seating, which would be up to 30 interior seats. No exterior seats are proposed and there will be no exterior modifications either. Um, their menu is a, their concept is a fresh Asian style menu that is customized to each patron's preferences. And they're largely, largely their business is takeout and catering. Um, and so it, it, I have actually menus and <laughs> it looks really, it looks really good. Um, we'll see. Okay. Um, to note, there are no exterior parking spaces that will be assigned to this tenant. And um, we've received uh, the department comments and we have no issues with them. They are aware of the uh, concern for odor control. And so while this operation won't be emitting a lot of odors, they will have appropriate um, odor mechanisms um, in place. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Tony Naver, who will be just giving you like a brief, uh, uh, you know, just a, talk a little bit about the concept, and then we'll be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, thank you for having us tonight. Um, teriyaki Madness is basically a, a rice and noodle bowl concept and, and uh, you know, sauteed vegetables. Um, I think we have about uh, two proteins that are on the menu that you can add to the bowl concept, you know, to any of the bowl, and a few appetizers. It's a very simple concept, you know, and it's, a, it's the hottest Asian concept in America right now. And, um, you know, we chose Burlington because Burlington is a hot spot in Massachusetts, you know, for dining, you know, with everything going on um, all around it. Um, but it is a great concept, and we're real excited to be here. Thank you. Um, does staff have any comments regarding uh, this application? Um, so same seats, food to food. Um, we don't have any concern with the applicant going in. Just to note, um, uh, since some other restaurants that just around town that you know if you park your delivery sign in the corner, it's a very prominent corner just to make sure you're 
um, vehicles are not used as signs in the parking lot. Um, uh, I know we've had a, a concern here previously, um, not from these guys. Um, no, I otherwise I just would be curious, you know, why Burlington um, and, and just kind of understand that decision because we're happy that you chose here. Well, a lot of the hottest concepts in, in America now are coming into Burlington, whether it's uh, Sweet Greens or um, uh, Press Cafe that's across the street and Chipotle, which is probably the hottest and, you know, the biggest in America now. So, um, you know, and whenever and Blaze Pizza just opened up a couple of years ago, you know, so when you have a concentration of um, the hottest restaurants in America, it really brings the diners you know, to the spot. I think you got the headline for the night, hottest concepts in America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right, terrific. Thank you. No, we're all set. Uh, we have a decision ready for action this evening. Okay. So department comments. We're, we're, it looks like we're, we're good here. Does uh, any members of the planning board have any comments or questions? All right. When are you going to open? That's my question. <laughs> Hopefully in October sometime. October. Okay. Um, Kristen, could we also put in our decision that we won't have any feather signs? <laughs> we do have the traditional um, no, no illegal signs unless yeah. permitted, or no si signs unless permitted by the town. I, 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 can't, I think we're not very clear because we have applicants. Yeah, no yeah. feather signs. Yeah, we put that on there and then it's okay. still out. Sure. I'm oh. not sure. I guess it gives them an opportunity to ignore the Prohibition like everybody else. Right. Yeah, I think that there's a feather. So I'm just sticking the ground. Oh, temporary something. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I think it, you know, just having that conversation, you know, even if it's not clear, having that conversation now, I think is helpful because, you know, other applicants uh, in, in the recent past have not necessarily adhered to that, which can be an issue. The location is very visible, anyways. So agreed. Yeah, agreed. Much. Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public have any comments on this item? No, uh, ma'am. No, I'm seeing nobody. Great, thank you. Thanks. Madam Chair, I make a motion to close the public hearing on this matter. Second. Thank you. Um, Aye. Sorry. <laughs> I'm an officer somewhere. Why don't feather signs? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of Law 7 incorporated for a special permit pursuit to Section 4.2.6.9, Fast Order Food Establishments of the Burlington Zoning Bylaw, for property located at 68 to 110 Burlington Mall Road, subject to the terms and conditions contained in Exhibit A attached. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Welcome to Burlington. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I come to the items A through AI together for discussion purposes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Item B is a continued public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to 12.1.5, currently 12.2.0, PD special permit of the zoning bylaw provisions 25 network drive. The North Blue Company is the applicant. Item C is a continued public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to one point light manufacturing or processing plants of the Northwest Park PDD bylaw provision 25 network drive. The Norwood Company as the applicant is a continued public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to 1.5.2. Is engaged in research, experimental and testing activity included but not limited to the fields of biology, chemistry, electronics, engineering, geology, medicine, and physics. Subject to the Regulations of the Board of Health of the Northwest Park PDD bylaw provisions 25 network drive is uh, the Noble Company is the applicant. Item E is a continued public hearing for approval of a special permit to 1.5.3 wholesale and warehousing of the Northwest Park PDD bylaw provisions for drive. The Noble Company is the applicant. Item F is a continued public hearing application for approval of a special permit. Pursuant to 1.6.7, discharges from man made structures into the wetlands of the Northwest Park PDD bylaw provisions. 25 Network Drive, the Norbloom Company is the applicant. Item G is a continued public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to 1.7.5 Accessory Health Club, located entirely within a commercial residential facility of the Northwest Park PDD bylaw provisions. 25 Network Drive, the Norbloom Company is the applicant. Item H is a continued public hearing application for approval of a special permit pursuant to 1.7.19, 
storage of oils and fuels, petroleum products, including storage for on-site heating purposes and landscape and maintenance equipment in excess of 50 gallons of the Northwest Park PD bylaw provisions 25 network drive to Nor Blue Company as the applicant. Item I is a continued discussion at, at application for approval of a minor engineering change. 15, 25, 35, 45, and 95 network drive, Nord Bloom Company is the applicant. That's a mouthful. There's got to be, there's got to be an easier way. <laughs> get a bonus. Batch. Well done. Welcome. Um, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, for the record, Robert Buckley, Raymond Bernstein, Todd Fart, Fremont Smith from the Nord Bloom Company. I guess I can start by saying, it's different and it's nice, I guess, to be back. Maybe I'll, res maybe I'll reserve that until the end. <laughs> um, the last time we, you know, this has been before the board and uh, various town committees for quite some time. Uh, we continued the last time uh, for a number of reasons. Um, but uh, the last meeting we had, there was some uh, discussion about uh, the interconnectivity of this uh, project, uh, both on the campus and in the general region. Uh, we've used this time wisely to study it and respond to some of the uh, questions from the uh, from the board and some of the concepts. And I'll turn it over to Todd. I mean, apropos of what was discussed earlier, uh, this is a very, very attractive site. Um, we're trying. Uh, I'll let Todd talk to it. But, uh, there's a lot of interest in this property. So. Good evening again, Todd Fremont Smith. I, I was going to talk about life science, but Scott Weiss talked about it for so long that I'll spare you. Um, but we are chasing life science at Network Drive as well. Um, if you go to the slide, this is um, we, again, this is all about team and, and who you bring to the team in terms of credibility. Because as a poli sci major, I'm not the life science guy that I think I am, but it is a huge part of the real estate market now, and everyone, everyone is. You have to be doing it because the office market is shrinking a little bit. The lab market is growing, so we're trying to balance out and protect our assets, protect your tax base. We have the, we have the right team. So 25 Network Drive is indicated here by the, the star. This is the last unbuilt site at Network Drive. Slide. Um, similar to the office building we permitted before, it's this very similar orientation. It's just more of a science building instead of an office building. And I'm going a little quickly because this is the third or fourth time we've been here. So we did hear the uh, the questions and good comments about interconnectivity, uh, pedestrian uh, a access across the site. Um, this is a diagram showing in red all the existing sidewalks at Network Drive. It is a big campus. It's 150 acres. Uh, we went out yesterday with uh, planning staff and conservation staff and economic development staff, and we walked all around Network Drive, including through the woods. Uh, there were a lot of mosquitoes, but we made it through. We'll tell you a little, little bit more. So on green here, you can see at the top of top left of the plan is one of those hiking trails, which crosses the North Ave at that location. I'll show you a bigger plan in a minute. Uh, in blue are the sidewalks being proposed as part of this building. And then if you look on the outside of the ring road, with Frank DePietro's help, we were able to measure the road. It looks like we could do two 11-foot drive lanes and then also a three-foot share the road bicycle pathway around 11 feet is what we have on third avenue so we know it works even for trucks um and so we could sign that and stripe that and and but we do we do think people are moving mainly within the campus i'll show you a little bit uh slide so this is from our site walk yesterday this is a non-professional photo of the, the the blade where we do concerts in the summer and uh, just a random shot of the, the scale of the campus is so big that what's inside, what you don't see when you're driving around is, are these large lawn areas, which are with pathways to walk and people do walk around and, and we have putting greens and we have uh, up next slide, I think is showing uh, community gardens, which, as I said, at one of our former hearings, this is one of our most popular amenities, sorry, strength, the, the, the tenants plant the plants and then they take the plants home with them. And I think we just water them. So that's very popular. Uh, next slide. Uh, we came upon our beekeeper. We keep honeybees on site, which is, I didn't know. Um, it's a, a kind of a remote, but we did such a big walk around that we found this guy actually tending to the bees, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's not some place that you would normally go to, so it's not. But I'm told there's a Burlington bear that tries to get in, so there's a fence around this now. There is. An electric fence around this. Uh, what do you do with the honey? I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. I'll find out. Yeah. 
it's, it's used. I, I think it's whoever maintains that hive takes it away and sells it. And then of course inside, and we will get you through the campus, uh, Mr. Member Covino asked if we could have a tour. The campus is open now. It's become such a multi-tenant campus that if you walk up and open the door, you can walk in. I didn't even know that until we got there the other day during, you know, during, during normal business hours. But there are long, there's a lot of internal space where people move around. There's a piano there, cafe, coffee shop. If you go to the next slide, you'll see a game room. We have indoor uh, basketball court. Uh, we just put in a $50,000 golf simulator, which is very popular. There's just a lot of stuff to do. It's like a college campus. And people do move through that spine from north to south. Coming out, they'll come out of the building, typically if they're going to 3rd Ave, right, very, very near the 25 network drive proposed uh, uh, life science building. Slide. Uh, this is just the outdoor cafe. I think you've seen this before. Slide. So we, we, we have thought about, and I've talked to the property managers about how people move on this campus and where they're going and what they're doing. And they do tend to move from north to south through the, through the outdoor spaces and then through the winter garden uh, to the end of building 35. Um, we anticipate the next slide when we build a 25 network drive, they will also come towards the winter garden because they'll want to participate in that, uh, those amenities, but also because ultimately next slide, people start to head down towards 3rd Ave. And this is actually what we see when we're out there. And um, 3rd Ave is literally, uh, you know, from, from that arrow to 3rd Ave is maybe two or three times around a high school track. So it, it's, it sounds like a long way, but on a nice day, it's, 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 it's under about a half a mile, about a 15 minute walk, 12 minute walk. And then the next slide. So what the yellow is showing is, is the pedestrian pathway. We, we certainly can work on improving signage to put signs up that say 3rd Ave, 0.6 miles that way. Um, and we think that's a good idea. Um, that third arrow is actually a, an organized uh, already sidewalk that goes through those parking lots to try to collect people and take them down to 3rd Ave. In green, you see the, the pathway, which at the top of the plan pathway, the, the hiking trails. Which go through. There's a lot of there are a lot of trees at North Park, Northwest Park. Uh, there's a lot of park at Northwest Park. And so when you're in these these trails, which are now done, by the way, I didn't realize they were done. We walked them with uh, planning staff and John and John Keeley. <clears throat> but they're legitimate pathways. If you go to the next slide. Um, um, this just shows the North Ave connection sidewalks that go all the way from Network Drive all the way to Third Ave. Uh, we've been building those with your help over the years. Granite curbing sidewalks. Um, Let's go. So this just shows that. that let's go to the next slide. Sorry. So we have these signs that we are putting up. We need to put up more. We did put up the first one, and these are the hiking trail signs. So they say hiking trail to Lifetime Fitness, 0.3 miles, and that's coming down from Network Drive. I do think it's a good idea. I don't know who mentioned it. Uh, it, it also came from Concom to amplify the signage and amplify the the ground markings to try to encourage people to walk and to make them realize it's only you know, 0.3 miles that way or because otherwise people might not walk into the woods if they didn't see this hiking. And I think we have a picture of one of the trailheads. Next slide. So on the left, you see the installation of the first sign. Um, the trails, we put this in because this was part of the lifetime fitness uh, approval. We told you we'd do the first leg of it. The landscapers kept going. Those trails go all the way up to 201 Burlington Road in Bedford um, to the north, which we own. So we could actually have a trailhead up there in Bedford, and then they go as far south as as my office at 71 3rd Ave on the way to Wegmans. You can't get all the way to Wegmans because there's some drainage ponds along Route 3, but it's it's. I would encourage you on a day when it's not too buggy uh, or hot because the bugs are out after all the rain. Um, it, it's 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 a legitimate. You feel like you're walking through New Hampshire. You do hear Route 3, but that can't be helped. <laughs> so people have been running out here and. What we'll do is I'm, I'm, I'm going to start to add more and more of these signs and we'll continue to work with the staff to try to uh, encourage pedestrian connectivity throughout the park as, as we go forward. Um, mention this to your tenants in the Huntington and the tray lines and. The I don't think we do a, a good enough job. So I think it's a good idea to amplify that and to put signage around where people can. Because I was, I was coming through the park at about 6 o'clock tonight and there are a lot of people there. Walking people live there now, so they're walking dogs, pushing baby prams. Um, it's it's. I don't usually see it after dark, especially for the past year. So it was it reminded me that it's very much alive. Wegmans is very much alive after dark. 
the restaurants, as you, as you all know. So that's a, that's a good question. So I'll, I'll defer to my attorney. I think there are laws that protect landowner. If a landowner allows you to, to walk on, on the land. If it's open to the public without uh, charge, there's liability protection. And most of the trails could be, they're, visu they're visually, uh, there are opportunities for security to see what's going on. Okay. But we could put signs up that say open from dawn to dusk or something. We, we're happy to consider those. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. That would make me feel more comfortable. Yeah. There's no lighting, right? right? No lighting. No, it's the woods. Right. It's the woods. You, you yeah. honestly don't want to encourage lighting because that gets people in there at night. Yeah. yeah. And then if you put security cameras in there and stuff, it, it, the presumption of security is there. And then it's almost more dangerous in a lot of ways. Um, Thank you. Sign it, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. People up there are on there during the day. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just for the record, uh, Mr. Raymond and Mr. Kavina probably remember this during the original permitting of the, the campus, and the Sun campus. We used to be charged a penalty for saying that, but that was referred to as the Lamont area. And early on, when it brought back memories, if you remember when Todd started the presentation, the bridges between the buildings. Those were a unique idea that we had to uh, actually get some exemptions to the building code to do to, again to enhance connectivity. And this is now on the ground. This people have heard me say this good planning takes 20 years. So it's yeah. been about 20 years. That campus <clears throat> has really stood the test of time. The highest rents in Burlington are at Network Drive. And we, we're, we're full. We're seeing strong lab demand, life science demand. Uh, and we see tenants all the time. They go up and down Route 3 looking for a better deal, and then they come to Burlington because of the amenities. They don't want to be too far away from the amenities. Um, we do have a signed letter of intent for one half of this building already uh, with a publicly traded life science company coming out of Kendall Square. So the mouse your, trap is working. As your attorney, you're under a uh, non-disclosure. Yeah, it, so. <laughs> it is. Uh, I think the staff has an idea of who that might be, but I can't, I can't talk about it here. So, But it, we are moving to lease. And we are hoping to start construction of this building in November. So uh, I know there are a lot of moving parts. Um, Bob and I aren't going anywhere, and we're hoping that you might uh, approve, uh, might support us tonight, so we could get going on getting this project moving. As it, as, as Scott Weiss said, these tenants are they're in a hurry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, does staff have any, have any comments regarding this item? Um, so. Uh, I'd like to hear from the board a little bit. I do have, um, in terms of, we do have a draft decision that's not in the staff report, but that has been passed out um, in front of you. I do have a lot of comments to that end in terms of, um, a dis in terms of items, I guess the big ones that I'll highlight. And then we can, if you want to give a little bit more in the weeds after you guys talk. Um, but the big items, we did have a really good walk yesterday. Uh, it was hot. Um, but it was it was a good walk. It was, I mean, it's a lot of the times you just need to get on the ground to take a look at the stuff um, and the connections that exist. Um, I think one of the best things that they ever did was connect North Ave and the two campuses. I mean, that was like a win win. Um, and then from, you know, it's like one thing then spurs other things that are really good and the trails. Um, you do feel, especially the lifetime trail, you feel. Like you step 10 feet and it's like, you're in a totally different place. So it, it is, they are really nice. They have expanded those. There's opportunity here to expand them even further to the intersection of, uh, can you go to. You're not on. I know I'm not. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's the bigger a flat plan. Yes, I think. I'm yeah, sure. like that is fine. Um, so some of the bigger items we talked about yesterday and that actually have been, I was reading a lot of older decisions of the Palomar decision at 15 mm -hmm. network um, back in 2008. And then with the office building in 2014 that had been previously permitted, there's a lot of discussion of the same thing about pedestrian connectivity, about um, a sidewalk down the roadway. So can you pull back out? So the roadway going down to Middlesex Turnpike that's on the right of this screen um, and there's also a gas easement that can kind of spur off that nice trail that can connect to that area as well that we talked about yesterday. Um, I did want to have them look at um, which uh, BSC can take a look at um, just the in original site drive and the 
tri uh, trip generation based on this use as well as the overall build out um, just to see if it triggered a signal warrant and or pedestrian warrant for the site drive because I mean there is a fair amount of traffic there's also a lot of traffic on network yes. drive we also have Kent Cottage right across the street so there's Kent Cottage across the street um, so I, I did want to have them relook at that if that did fit a warrant for a signal to have a signal put in mm -hmm. yep. um, in, in looking at both pedestrian and vehicular movements. Um, so sidewalk down the sub and that roadway that's to the right is a subdivision roadway back in 2008. You got um, in order to get 25 and 15 having separate frontage because um, it was all one campus and sun. Um, that's a subdivision roadway and was laid out as such. We do have an approved plan. The approved plan has a sidewalk on it um, from back then. Uh, say we, there's some sidewalk improvements. The bike lane along the ring road, bike lane walking along the ring road um, to strike that and mar pavement market. So, Kristen, when you talk sidewalk, are we talking either sidewalk or bike uh, bike lane or? So, I'm talking specifically sidewalk on the subdivision roadway that goes down to the Thai, Thai restaurant, uh, white, no, coconut. white coconut. Um, sidewalk there, uh, the ring road, um, stripe, stripe it as more of a bike lane type where it's pavements all flat and there's, uh, as Todd um, was mentioning, the bike lane of a strike portion along the ring road and reduce the lane widths themselves. Is that correct? Yep. <clears throat> um, with more of a share the road, um, bike path kind of, um, whatever is we can fit there to make it open for, um, and open and defined as, as that location for biking and walking. Um, It'd be kind of those posts that you've seen in, in kind of more urban areas for the bike path to differentiate that so the traffic doesn't go into the bike path um that's something that i have to no, we talked about to... it's a frank de Pedro question we talked about paint color maybe different paint color nothing nothing no physical barrier i think yeah i think that might look you mean those plastic things that see them all well it's yeah. safety of the, of the no i understand yeah no but i don't know if there's enough room for that um uh, yeah, there, there, sorry, sorry. there, there probably isn't enough room for a plastic barrier. What we had, what Frank had looked at was a, a sharrow, so sort of a, a three foot wide section um, for bikes, and then a, a portion of the lane would be shared. Sorry, for the record, who's speaking right now? Uh, sorry, uh, this is. It's Marissa Valentino at BSC. Thank you. Working yeah. With, yeah. Um, the last piece, um, it was significant was the um in the 15 network drive the to create the sidewalk along that edge um from that oh. intersection to the uh, north ave top left yeah um, that's in the north ave connection with network drive so you you'd have that loop and then ensure that the internal loops all um created some of the not the, the ring road but the internal loops had had um you know paths in in those locations and also to mark them so if people did want to do kind of the circuits and get out and walk that they there was some um defined areas to like if you want to go out to walk but if you do this five times it's a mile or similar to what they um had proposed in the common with the housing proposal if the circuits there you know just to allow people mm -hmm. to get out and be well um you guys did just get um the fit well score for Northwest Park, which is a really good, um, it's not an award, it's a designation um, in parks in Burlington. So for Northwest Park, and hopefully we can get that up here as well. Um, so those are the big items. Other than that, um, we do have, oh, and then there's the minor engineering change that anything relevant from here will be in that. The minor engineering change affects a lot of the other small pieces as we get the sidewalk network to come out of the center of the site toward these sites and to better connect them. So um, there's been a lot of discussion today. <laughs> all that in this decision, is all that in this decision? All that is in here, yeah. We're okay, we've, Bob and I have read all this. I think Kristen's right, when we walked the site physically, some of these things were pretty self-evident that they needed to be looked at. And it's a big project, so. 
I, I had a question for Kristen staff. Uh, I know when we when we permitted the Polymer building, there was talk about putting the sidewalk down to at that time it was Cedar Park, I think, way back. Yep. And that's what you're talking about. That's that? what I'm talking about here. Okay. So that uh, they will do that. And they will do that. And John Keeter was with you. He was with us. There was some conservation. There, there appears to be physical room. We have some questions about the grade, right, and and the liability issues, which what we will make. Kristen, I don't remember the exact sure. language, but <clears throat> if it's feasible, we'll do it. Sure. So oh, okay. I, I think at that time you had determined it wasn't feasible. So it, it has changed. We determined that it was or was not. Was not. It's not. That that's changed. That was how uh, they were shown on the plan, but the original assessment was because of the grade. Right. Both the concom issue. Right. It's an ADA issue. Right. And yeah. the concom issues. Uh, but so you think you can overcome that? We're certainly going to look at it and, and take a hard look at it. Well, um, the biggest difference is now that they that the subdivision has been filed and finalized back in 08 or 09, that it's a subdivision roadway. It's not a site drive. Right. If it's a site drive, similar that we have this conversation every single time the mall comes in front of us. Our Middlesex Turnpike down the mall drives are way too steep for an ADA accessible right. sidewalk, okay. so we can't, we can't, and they can't build them. Being a subdivision roadway, having AD, you know, ADA, a lot, as long as you stick with the roadway, is a little bit different, is, is a very different conversation in terms of um, what they as property owners necessarily need to meet. I think that, I think in that fact, we can, we can build the sidewalk. Um, down, but that wasn't necessarily the case when we started Palomar. It was just the site drive into the site, so that's why it's. But it, is it physically the same? Yeah. Yeah. It is a different it's kind of, it's, But it's not. So, you know, you, you've been on so super. It's, it's more semantics than anything. No, I think. Yeah. There's the engineers who have to stamp that drawing. Yes. Did not want to stamp that drawing when it was a site. Drive. When we walked in yesterday, it physically looks like you could do it. So the, the issue of grades and ADA liability, I think, are still a little bit of an open issue. Right. We're willing to pay for it if we can do it. We've got a big building going up. It wasn't just the grade of the yeah. road itself back then. As I remember, it was also the grade off the road. So you're planning a sidewalk on the road now? On the, on the shoulder. On the shoulder. shoulder. Yeah. A real sidewalk. That area that already exists. On the north edge of the road. So what changed, uh, if I may, Madam yeah. Chair, uh, what, what changed some of the analysis I think someone alluded to it earlier, but maybe it was Kristen, the connection of North Ave to the site. That that little apron that's probably a little longer than this room. You did that when you did Abbott, right? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's, that's actually a driveway. But it, it, uh, so it connects now, that, that becomes your site access. So, uh, and this now becomes the subdivision. So it's a road. So which condition is that? Just so I can, is it J? It Where is J, yeah. Yeah, I mean, as I said, we can, you know, words with a little bit, but yeah. you, you need to, like, I wanted to get at least to the point of the things that we were really looking at as we look at completion of this campus. Uh, great, and this is a language that will be in. It just doesn't say it, please. Right. It doesn't say if feasible. And that's what we want. We want it constructed because you throw enough money at anything you can do that. So. Thank you, Ronnie. Is there anyone else have, who has questions or comments? If, if Paul Roth wanted to take that road straight down to the Middlesex Turnpike, and there was a lot of discussion at that time, in other words, Rather than having that sharp corner and down the hill, he 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 was concerned when that was built that we leave it so there was it could be done. Mm. You could just keep going straight down and put a traffic light down the bottom. He thought, and he thought it would take a lot of that traffic off that, and people could go right down underneath in there, you know. Just real quick, uh, sure. Actually, I, th I thought we would, uh, with this, the approval is going to just wait on the name of the company so we can kind of go through the normal process. I don't know if we've got a 
approve these special permits without knowing the company that's going in there. So we were going to hold off on one special permit of all the, of the other special permits until we knew the name. Uh, we did talk a little bit about that at the first meeting. Um, and as I said, like in this, you know, in the staff report, we had a concern. We just wanted to make sure if you guys were. Where am I going? I mean, there were. In a place to move forward, but uh, initially the special permit that I remember you guys are talking about specifically was the Can't lose the chemicals. I'm just trying to get exactly which one it is, but it was the storage of um, yeah. chemicals. I think was one of the one of the ones that you were going to know a little bit more specific information from the tenant. Um, and that's why when the Richmond group came, um, I think we were wanted to make sure that there was an understanding of kind of what was typical to a life science building versus what's specific to the tenants. Um, and a lot has happened since that meeting, and I honestly don't remember exactly what that was, but I don't know if you guys have a little bit more mm -hmm. on that. But I'm sure, right. to, to answer that question of, you know, what is the package of a building to approve kind of without understanding specifically the tenant and what are those pieces? Right. That? I'm more concerned about setting precedents here that we're going to approve these special permits without the tenant, which we know, I, I mean, that's kind of, I've been here for the past few, few times, it's not, it's not normal. So I think if we, if we approve all the rest of them, they have the opportunity to go forward. And the only thing that would you'd have to come back with, with the applicant and the detail that we normally get. I think the, I, I think some of us at least thought that there was a level of comfort because no matter what you did, when the when the uh, tenant came in, they had to go to the board of health to get their approval. The, the board of health. health. Board, of board of health. health. Excuse me. Yeah. Board of health. Right. Oh, yeah. so we're kind of, kind of giving them a buy here, which I'm not necessarily all that comfortable with, to be honest with you. Because normally, I'm assuming with every other applicant, we go through that process. So maybe we, we could flip that around. Maybe we just don't do that for any applicant. What right you're suggesting it. is that we hold off on H. We hold right. off on H, or yeah. we we change kind of our policy and say, let's not do it for any, you know, special yeah. permit. Because why? If we're going to just say this, I know what you go to health, then I why saying. why have it a, a condition that we need to hold it up for? So I'm just I'm looking for more consistency there. You know, there. Madam Chair, Mayor, I shouldn't take that. And what's to kind of give the green light, except for that one, and then once we get the applicant, then we're be ready to go. But you you get you know nine tenths of what I would do on that and that's from a procedural standpoint, I don't think we're de deviating. I mean this is how it's done in the sense that you're building a building and you're granting the authority to store chemical. The user who comes in and occupies the contains and, and engages in the operation has to come before the board to actually engage in the use. So that's where the board of health as well as at that point in time, you know who the user is, so you'll be able to ap approve the uh, whatever chemicals are. And I believe we have to process. come back here. Come back here yeah. right. for yeah. for laboratories uh, and correct me with staff on that. This is to build the building and provide yeah. that this site can be used to store hazardous material. They actually, why don't we just write that into the into the thing? Yes. Sure, that's fine. Yeah, that's we have no problem. Yeah. They're they're happy to come as soon as it's they're trying to get through their first quarter without announcing. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. If if they're going to come back and support us, how does everyone else feel? I'm just looking. I'm continuing to get staff on that. Can she write that into the design? I, right. Yeah, sorry, I'm just I'm writing. So, okay, so if we move forward, then prior to the start of construction, I mean, why, so then the applicant well, comes in, or you we can't you, occupy, right? We can't, we can't occupy without. Well, and then the applicant come in to verify that the. Right. So don't we need a don't we need a, a special permit for laboratory use? You have you have it here. Yeah, but yeah, I see. All right. So but, uh, okay. But the act, the actual user will have to come before the board of health with a list of uh, chemicals and what okay. they does. And we'll come back here too. And they have to get a, a a special permit for the board of health, and we'll come back here. Yeah. So for the you, actual chemicals. Do you? Let's write that so in. okay. And, uh, we don't have a problem. With yeah. That. So okay, because that accident happens normally, but now we're taking because this the heating. Yeah. Um, I mean, the one that you're we're looking at is heating and store, and that's pretty much for your generators. That special permit. Right. For you needed to construct the building and to get finance. Chemical storage. So for chemical storage and 
to ensure the actual usable fuel oil user compliance with the submit to the board permit here. You'll come in back to the board. The actual user will submit to the board uh, yeah. a list of hazardous materials and, and go to I, the I think it, More specifically, well, okay. Yeah. To engage in the to tie it back to that condition for laboratory use. Right. Just put something in that condition that says final approval by the board of, uh, by the planning board. Of the chemicals to be used by yeah. the final user. We're fine with that. Speaking of well, Bill, the, when we think of, you know, chemicals and large amounts of stuff, I mean, most of these medical labs, well, they call it very small quantities. In other words, they can take everything in the lab. And put it on. Yeah, yeah. So that's where the Board of Health comes in. Well, I can, uh, we'll be back. Actually, well, I have experience in labs and things like that. Sure. Yeah. We'll, we'll be back, though, with the tenant. Yeah, it depends on what the user depends on. That's right. Anyone else have any more questions or comments? This is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public have any comments on this item? Seeing no one, may I uh, may I have a motion, please? Can I can I just pause just for one yeah. second? Sure. I just want to make sure I've <laughs> said what I need to say in terms of what this this is. Um. Okay. So item E is the that they shall that everything's met. I think this is the item that we'd probably add the what we just talked about. Oh. Um, oh, yeah, and then we don't have anything on transportation demand management. It is a typical for almost every office type user. <laughs> um, so that's like, you know, that you have ride share programs and you join a TMA and you have, you know, um, limit trip generation. Um, as I mentioned, I do want them to do further study on the entrance drive specifically in terms of pedestrian and vehicular um, and uh, wanting to look a little bit more on the, uh, the net versus gross numbers of um, the park and kind of full build out, uh, which, you know, but overall, if the warrant meets, if the, if the information meet a signal warrant, that they'll build a signal, um, but they just need to know a little bit more information on that. Um, and that's more kind of park wide. Uh, okay, sidewalk we talked about. Um, do you have all vertical granite curbing or do you have a mix of vertical and concrete? Marissa, could you describe the curbing on the 25 network drive site? Or just say yes, there's a mix or no, there's all, it's all vertical. Yes, vertical. It's vert 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 vertical granite. It's okay. all vertical granite. Okay. Um, paying attention. That was the first. <laughs> What's that? That was the first class campus one site. Yeah. It's not. There's a lot of concrete. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, there's a lot of concrete here. A lot of concrete curbing up there too. So I think. I, I, That's why. It's, yeah. I have a condition that it? says it should be vertical and where it needs to kind of mix. I like that condition. I like the way you have it written. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we'll do that. Um, the bike lane, um, ongoing maintenance of the off of, of the. Pedestrian trail plus signage um, on dust dawn. Um, uh, the traffic report I just talked about. Um, okay, I think I'm pretty good. And then and we'll provide, all, we'll provide the staff with updates on those issues. That's realized anyway, so you can have it. Uh, and then John Keeley, just the um, which is already in your conservation permits, but just. Um, they complete and thorough evaluation of the existing stormwater basins. They were built quite some time ago with the original sun to just to make sure that they're working as um, they should be. We had a similar condition in the um, corporate drive permits because those were also have been built a while back. Um, yeah. Just coordination with the company. Right, so. um, understanding phasing, if there's phasing, just to make sure that occupied areas and non-occupied areas, there's Good separation. Um, okay. uh, it is, that's, that's really it of relevance. I just want to make sure I hit on all those things before you voted. Sorry. Thank you. Um, and TDM. Are we looking to close the call? Are we going to continue this? Looking to close the Liz has a motion prepared to state if you're looking to move forward with a motion. I'm just going to make a motion to close the call. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hey, this is the roll call. I was waiting for the roll call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Faster without it. <laughs> May I have a motion, please? Because we'll read the motion. Okay. A motion to um, make a motion to approve the request of the Norblin Company Inc. for a special permit pursuant to section 12.1.5, currently 12.2.0 PD special permit of the Burlington Zilling Bylaws and sections 1.51 light manufacturing or processing plants, 1.52 laboratories and used for research, experimental and testing activities, including but not limited to the field of biology, chemistry, electronics, engineering, geology, medicine, and physics subject to the planning for making the findings set forth in section 8.3.7.4 of the medicine of the zoning bylaws and subject to the applicable rules and regulations of the Board of Health, section 1.5.3, wholesale trade and warehousing, section 1.6.7, discharges from man-made structures into the wetlands, 1.7.5, accessory health clubs located entirely within a commercial or residential facility, and 1.7.19, Storage of oil that fuels petroleum products, including storage of on site for on site heating purposes and landscape maintenance equipment in excess of 50 gallons of the Northwest Park Plan Development District bylaw provisions for property located at 25 network drives, subject to the terms and conditions contained in exhibit B attached. As amended. As amended. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Right, yeah. Very much. This is a big. This is a big deal for Burlington. This is really, the market's really coming here, and it's it, it's exciting to see. Uh, so thank you. Very Sorry. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I have a motion, please. Liz will read it. I will read it. Um, make a motion to approve the request for approval of a minor engineering change for property located at fifteen twenty five thirty five forty five and ninety drive to allow for modifications to the internal. Circulation, parking alterations, and landscaping enhancements as reflected on the redlined plan entitled. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For time and consideration. And uh, as Scott indicated earlier, this is an indication of the two plus years or three plus years, I forget, of work that the board and the staff has done to make this an attractive uh, destination for this type of industry. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Can I ask a point of order when he presses? That's for us. <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't know. My first day. <laughs> don't have any minutes, correct? No. Okay. Uh, we might, but I didn't put that in. I apologize. Not a problem. It's my own. Um, other matters uh, for discussion pur purposes. Uh, 68 Wilmington uh, Definitive Subdivision. They're looking for an extension of time. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that the Planning Board hereby agrees to extend the statutory time to complete the 68 Wilmington Road Definitive Subdivision from December 11th, 2016 to July 14th, 2022. Second. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Great. Um, nope. So, I guess we're good. Next week on the 22nd in the town, town hall annex meeting room, um, Potentially the brand new, if uh, available and staffed, we'll, we'll circle back with the group. Um, we'll be conducting uh, what we're calling a, a planning board retreat. So, um, what time is it? Uh, what? I think it's 6 30. 30 works for everyone. Thank you. Okay. We'll send once I, Brenda and I talk a little more, we'll send out a, more of an agenda. So, um, during that time, you know, we can 30 to 8, yes. Right, so we can discuss things of, you know, such as, you know, what we're looking to accomplish over you know, the next year. Um, you know, some of the things that are, are actually on on this agenda, the Airbnb is short term rentals, illegal signage. So, you know, I think we can really get into the nitty gritty at, at that point in time. Um, and then um, also uh, we wanted to discuss the appointment to the select board's transportation committee. Jen's still on. 
Jen is um, Dawn. Jen's Dawn. Jen, um, if you guys, Jen has been really the, I don't know, I want to say the lead, but she's definitely been leading the um, transportation committee, the um, town meeting town transportation committee. The selectmen um, are looking to set up a transportation committee as well. Um, it, anyway, um, but she's been involved in a lot of those conversations or listened to the selectmen's meeting this past Monday. I think there's a little bit of how many people should be on it, or what are exactly are they looking at? Um, I know the transportation committee, um, the previous transportation committee did a very good job putting together a report for town meeting. Um, but uh, I don't know if Jen is on and she wants to give us like a sentence or two on the what you understand to be the selectmen committee agenda. Uh, you're, you're on top of it more than the rest of us. Um, I did watch that Monday night. Um, I don't know if Pat O'Brien is still with us. Um, I think she's here on WebEx. I, um, she was with me on the town meeting transportation committee. Um, which has been, which is no longer, um, but the selectmen have voted to approve their transportation committee. Um, they have um, seven members, um, one of which will be a planning board member. Um, so they are asking that we um, appoint somebody. Is there any um, from board would like to volunteer? What, is, there a, is there a scope to it? Yeah, we know when the meetings are. No, I don't. Jen, did they discuss that at all at the meeting or? No, they did not discuss when the meetings will be. Okay, so well, they, we'll, we'll do a little research and we'll bring that to the okay. retreat. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah I, I, that's why I have a discussion slash appointment. If it, it, I wasn't sure if we had enough information to yeah, sure. you guys to feel comfortable with the appointment yet, but, sure. but Jen, thank you for um, letting us know. Stay a little deeper on that. No problem. Thank you. Could Jen represent the no board? Problem. Uh, no, it needs to be a planning board member. Oh, got it. Well, we could make you an honorary. <laughs> All right. Well, like size, Jen. These microphones are great. Eh? We'll, we'll <laughs> take a little time and bring that to the retreat. Uh, Liz, do you have an update? Oh, okay. where, where's the retreat going to be? We don't know yet. TBD. Well, it should be at a public building. Um, Is your pot available? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. For, uh, as long as. Uh, can I have a, a date for the retreat? The 22nd. 22nd, 6.30 six thirty. Yeah, that's eight. also the yeah. same night that the housing partnership committee. What time is the retreat? 6.30 six thirty six thirty to 8. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll do whatever I have to do. Um, okay. Uh, Liz, do you have an update on the Northwest Park Housing Committee? Sure. So the Northwest Park Housing Committee, just a little background. Um, when 174 Middlesex Turnpike, a Norblum property next to Lifetime Fitness, um, was um, brought forth to town meeting, um, they agreed to set up um, a special kind of unique um, affordable housing um, agreement with the town. Um, and part of that, um, selectmen, you know, asked the transportation to committee to hire um, a housing expert to um, help us come up with terms and conditions of that. And we have that report from the um, from the housing, um, Judy Barrett actually from Barrett Planning Group, she did the, uh, the report. So we have that to give to the select board um, as well as kind of marketing plans and, um, and kind of how to move forward or how they should be kind of crafting this um, MOU with Nordblom and the um, and the, the people that are going to be managing the housing. Um, so, Barbara, do you have any, you were also involved, do you have any other? Um, I think that the committee worked well and we, we sort of handed off now to the select board. But what I think is important for this board to understand and is also for town meeting to understand, and, and we have asked um, Nordblom to at some point go back to town meeting and give them an update is that um, our original intent as everyone will recall is that we wanted to create this very special opportunity for burlington seniors to have affordable housing in this great new building that norman was building it and that's that's the intent that's still the intent but um, as we delved deeper and when we hired Judy Barrett, she explained to us some of the different restrictions that we had to be aware of because of fair housing. So it's just important for everyone to recognize that 
while it is still our goal to have most of those affordable apartments go to Burlington seniors, they probably won't all be Burlington seniors. Um, we can't completely restrict it in order, we have to abide by state law. So there will probably be other people from outside of Burlington getting some of those units, hopefully not all of those units. Um, but I, I wanted everyone to be aware of that because when we presented it to town meeting, we presented what our goal was, which was to have those at the time, I think it was 43 units mm -hmm. um, go to Burlington seniors. It's not going to be all Burlington seniors. And we just want to be really upfront and honest about that with everyone. Um, hopefully most of them will go to Burlington seniors and we're going to make it as easy as possible that it does. That's what our marketing effort is going to be so that we're really reaching out to Burlington residents and encouraging them and making it as easy as possible for them to um, apply. But it's not going to be all Burlington seniors. Thank you, Barbara. Appreciate it. Um, the housing partnership. Uh, Ernie, do you have an update for us on that? Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure what my update consists of. So, last so, meeting, so uh, I can. <laughs> uh, no, no, I just, I was hoping, Ernie, you could um, tell us a little bit about what you guys have submitted for. Um, September town meeting in the right. affordable housing trust that was kind of mainly uh, we're we're looking uh, to get uh, probably MAPC or, or some uh, affiliate of MAPC to do an affordable housing trust uh, affordable housing assessment excuse me uh, this would be completely this would be outside this would be as objective as possible that would be my point anyways, and I think everybody on the on the trust because uh, so there's a need for senior housing. Sure. Who says so? Okay, so I mean, you know, there's a need, <laughs> there's a need for startup housing. Who said so? I mean, who is there, is there, or are these antidotes type things? You know, is no, it, it every, fat? Everybody knows, but we don't have the Yeah, numbers. everybody knows, but we really don't have the hard numbers. So <laughs> So we're looking for a group that does this all the time uh, to do it do it for Burlington. Uh, obviously, using some data that's that already exists because there's no sense in doing it twice. But but uh, doing it from from the ground up uh, type thing. Uh, well, we want, we want to go to town meeting in September, looking for authority money to do so uh, with the with the intention of actually taking the money from maybe the affordable. They, there's almost a million dollars sitting in affordable housing money. Uh, some of it from the reserve, six hundred thousand from the reserve at Corporate Drive, uh, and other little chunks that that keep accumulating. And on that on that same on that same note, we're we're also looking for to establish what they call a municipal housing trust, which would control how that money would be spent. Which you know, be, in other words, the town meeting would vote to approve to to set it up and the, the composition of it and that kind of thing. So we can get you know the money's there. We should, we should be using it. Absolutely. Yeah, we should be using it, and we should and and especially if the uh, if the CPA, the Community, Community Preservation, uh, Preservation yeah. Act, like, uh, it comes into existence hopefully next May, I think. Larry Cohen and uh, John Sachs, I think, have been spearheading it and, and they put it off because of COVID. And, and so that could generate some more money. So, I mean, there's, there's you know, we've been talking about it for 30 years and really, I mean, we did do some things uh, such as South Bedford Street, the old military housing. Uh, the planning group was very instrumental in, in getting that and putting it together. But uh, so it looks it looks good. There's there's some people very interested on the committee now, and it's and it's uh, it's moving forward. Thank yeah. you, Ryan. Barbara, I hate to put you on the spot. We we already talked about sculpture, but if you have anything else, that that's I do. Here, that's awesome. I actually do have other things. Like exciting. <laughs> there's a lot going on. Uh, I already talked about the benches. Already talked about um, celebrate Burlington Day. In addition to that, um, another exciting piece of news is that the Sculpture Park Committee was approached by a Burlington resident who wants to donate a sculpture. Ooh. So we're gonna be having a new sculpture come mm -hmm. into the park. If you go by, you'll see a little area with yellow tape that's marked off. That's for the um, DPW, because they're gonna come in and pour another concrete pad. And 
hopefully the new sculpture will be ready and installed shortly before Celebrate Burlington Day. And we are gonna put a big tarp over it and have a grand wow. unveiling um, on Celebrate Burlington Day if the sculpture sculptor gets it done in time. So there is an if in there. If not, we'll just do the big event another time. But it's very exciting because it's, um, we're hoping it, it wasn't something we thought of. We were approached by a Burlington resident and it's, it's such a wonderful thing and the select board approved it. And we're hoping that maybe other Burlington residents or businesses even may decide that they want to commission sculptures in the future because um, then we don't have to pay for them <laughs> and they're permanent and it's a wonderful thing for both the, the family and for the town. Um, the only other thing is that um, we need to appoint a new member and since the Burlington Sculpture Park Committee is a committee of the playing board, we need to appoint a new member. Paul Raymond was serving as our recreation department member but he has stepped down and we have um, David Norton has agreed to take on the position so we need to officially appoint him. Um, I don't have any information about that. Does anyone else? Nope. Well, then I would like a, to make a motion that the board approve the appointment of David Norden to the Burlington Sculpture Park Committee. So how do you spell his last name? N-O-R-D-E-N. As expected, oh. yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair on Recreation, if I can. Sure. Yep. Oh, so that, that's uh, I uh, thank uh, Paul Ram for all his years as uh, recreation uh, commissioner uh, from the planning board. Uh, just an update from them. Um, the there's a walkway they put in at Simons Park uh, that goes basically goes to the pool and the uh, to the building that's uh, ADA uh, approved. So that's now complete. And there's going to be a ribbon cutting uh, at the recreation maintenance building up there on. Um, yeah, it was at Meadow, Meadow, it, it Meadow looks great. and that's uh, July 26th at 9 a.m. That looks terrific. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. It looks so good. I, it, doesn't it look nice? It looks really nice. <laughs> it does. Um, I, you know, the uh, recreation is also our improvements um, at another town at Town Group, but uh, the fencing over at Rahana's Park is looking really nice as. As a child who went to that park quite a bit, that fence. In the paving, the paved, the everything looks great. Yeah, they it looks it. wonderful. Yeah. They're doing a wonderful job. Yeah. Um, next up, uh, we have Airbnbs and other short-term rentals. You know, I, I do think this is definitely an uh, an agenda item for our sure. retreat. Um, you know, I don't know if there's anything we want to say about it now, or if we want to table it until that time. Yeah. Um, same thing with the illegal signage, you know, feather signs and, and such. Uh, I definitely think it's a, it's a point of conversation for, for the retreat as well. Um, so, you know, if we can kind of think about what we're seeing in those properties that, you know, are, are um, the offending parties, so to say, um, you know, maybe we can talk about that at that point in time. Um, I don't see any correspondence, uh, reports from town. Sure. Uh, could I ask? Uh... The zoning bylaw review committee has a representative from planning, and at this time, I am that representative. Sure. I would like to continue. I think it's an annual appointment by yourself. Oh, oh I wasn't aware of that. That you so that it's sure. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it happened, wasn't it, Barbara? Did you appoint me, or did I just do it? Uh, well, I would like to dominate you. <laughs> I think, uh, well, no, it's, it's, it's not a vote of the board. I think. No, I think I did appoint you. Sure. Brenda just has to be a, but I just wanted to do it out in the open. I didn't want I would, to I would, sneak I over and say, Brenda. Yes, you can. The chair has the authority. I have the to, to, yeah. to appoint subcommittees and so forth. And there was some controversy about a subcommittee I was on. So I became chair and appointed myself. <laughs> okay, well, you are now appointed. Thank you very much, Madam. Okay, Committee. we do not have any subcommittee reports. We do not have any unfinished. We do not have unfinished business or new business. May I have a motion, please? Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, we do. I know, I know. Uh, but well, we're not all kind of magic time that you can like put down in the book I got. But anyway, no, there's just no magic. I, I know, I just want to times every week. I want to say, <laughs> um, just with the retreat. Um, the th things I want to have you guys just put in your brain, um, like when you, what are you concerned about? 
what are priorities for us? Um, what are priorities? Just what about the town is how things are going? Like what, what's the strategy? I mean, I know we've heard a lot about um, residential housing construction. I mean, like everywhere. Yeah. Um, but just think about those type of things and what we're, what we're gonna reach out to you guys and just try to get a little feedback so we can start with something to start working with. Um, so we can, yeah, just anyway. What's so, throw something on as a week? Yeah, 6 30, but we'll send out an invite. Yes. Everyone. <laughs> we can. Yeah. I, I don't have anybody who. Not that we have the power to Is it objecting to a 7 o'clock start time? No. 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 Okay. Over the retreat? 7 o'clock. Yep. Oh, 7. Okay. That'll give me okay. to do the. Uh, Seven, so seven to eight thirty. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Great. Okay. Okay. Now I'll go ahead. Sorry. May I have a motion, please? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Oh. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.